Hi guys, so today we are going to meet mini beasts. Now mini beasts are animals with no backbone. So up until now, all of the animals that we've met have got a backbone. They are known as vertebrate animals, but not today. We are meeting invertebrate animals. So animals with no backbone, no skeleton. Okay, but they have got something a little bit different. They are known as arthropods. And these arthropods are things like wasps, bees, butterflies, moths. And they have something else to protect them. They have what is called an exoskeleton. Now these exoskeletons, they are like a hard outer casing for them. So it's like having their bones on the outside. And that is what a lot of arthropods have to help protect them and give them structure. Now to begin with, we are going to meet our friend Oakley. And Oakley is a giant stick insect. She is known as a giant thorny stick insect. And these guys would come from the other side of the world near Australia. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to do my little magic, get that to focus in on her. There we go, so you can get a better look at her. Now these guys are known as insects. And the easiest way for us to tell that an animal is an insect is by looking at their legs. So if I hold her up, we're going to have a little count of her legs. So she has got one, two, three, four, five, six. So if an arthropod has got six legs, that means they're an insect. They have also got three parts of their body. So she's got her head, she's got her thorax, and she has got her abdomen. That is another way that we can tell that an animal is an insect. Often they might have wings. They don't all have to have wings. Um, these types of stick insect don't. So sometimes with stick insects, uh, the males will have wings, but the females won't. These guys, neither the girls nor the boys have wings. Um, now these guys are called stick insects because of what they look like. So what does she look like? A stick. So where would it make sense for her to live? up in the trees. So when she's up in the trees, she looks like part of the tree. She camouflages. She blends into where she lives. So other animals are not going to see her to try and eat her. So what she would do if a predator animal, so one of those animals that she thinks is going to try and eat her, comes into the tree, she will stand completely still, pretend to be a stick. And then the animal thinks there's no there's no food in this tree. I'm going to go to another tree. Now, I know that a lot of people get a little bit worried about these creepy crawlies, but she cannot hurt you. If we have a good old close look at her face there, I'll try and focus in a little bit. <laughs> You've got to come down, Oakley. Can you see her face there? She has not got teeth that can bite us. She only eats leaves. She is a herbivore. She cannot harm us. If we get really close... Let's try and zoom in there. Can you see she's got what look like little fibres, little hairs around her mouth. Those are known as mandibles and they help bring the leaves into her mouth so she's able to eat them a little bit better. I think it's so fascinating to look at them. And she's giving you a good old wiggle with her antenna. Those help her find her way around. But you can see she's also got eyes. Now insects have got very special eyes. They're known as compound eyes. And that means they're made up of multiple lenses. So you must have seen a fly's eye or maybe even tried on those glasses uh, that look like fly's eyes. And they make your vision go awful, don't they? But apparently a compound eye is to help these invertebrates, these arthropods, see their way around um, a lot easier. But ultimately, I think personally, that those compound eyes are what makes the flies just fly into the windows and not be able to find their way out. But I hope you like Oakley. I think she's pretty amazing to watch and look at. I mean, she is just a master of camouflage. If she was in a tree right now, you would not be able to see her. She's incredible. The one thing I haven't mentioned is this bit at the end here. People often think that this bit is a stinger. It's not. These types of stick insect actually climb down from the tree and they will lay their eggs in the ground. Now, stick insects can do this in a number of ways. They can attach them to the trees. They can fling them as far as they can across the woods and forests. But these giant thorny stick insects actually climb down and they poke this bit. I'll show you again. This bit into the ground. And that is where she thinks it's safe for her to lay her eggs. So once they hatch, they will be teeny tiny little stick insects. And she'll lay about 100 eggs in her, or 200 eggs in her lifetime. 
but lots and lots of eggs. Now, the more that they lay, the more likely more to survive. So that's why they lay so many eggs. I hope you've enjoyed meeting her. I think she's pretty incredible. So next up, we have got a very slimy friend. This is our friend, Speedy. Now, Speedy is a giant African land snail. He is not fully grown yet. They can get bigger than this. Now, to give you an idea of the biggest land snail that I've met, they were as big as my foot. Now, I'm a size four. That's not a massive foot, but for a snail, that's huge. That's huge. <laughs> so he's got a lot of growing and a lot of catching up to do. I'm going to bring him nice and close for you. Get him all focused in there we go oh look at that that's incredible now snails they are very very slimy animals and they are there is a reason for them being slimy they don't have legs like us they are not able to walk around like we do so they actually use their slime to help them move about and their slime protects them so it they basically acts like our shoes do. So they are able to slide over all of the sharp rocks, even broken glass. They could slide over a razor blade and it wouldn't cut them. Their slime is that protective. Now, it also, because they come from Africa, where it's very, very warm, it actually helps protect them from the sun as well. It stops them being um, dried out in the sun. But if it does get too hot or too cold, what they can do is retract their body back into their shell. Then they'll release their slime, which is actually a type of mucus. Um, so they'll, re re they'll release loads of slime. That dries and creates a door to their shell. So then it protects them from the extremities of the weather. So the high or low temperatures and when the temperature has um, dropped or um, risen to a nice temperature for them they're able to break through that and continue as normal now he's having a good old explore on my hands you can see these top bits here these long stretched out bits these are his eyes his eyeball is right at the end now it's a little bit tricky to see with him because he has got the albino gene so he's a lot lighter than um, your standard um, African snail um, but his eyeball is right up top and often people think that these little ones down here are little mini eyes but they're not they are known as feelers so snails are naturally nocturnal so they come out at night so rather than using their eyes they're going to use their feelers to feel along the ground find any food and um, sense anything that could be dangerous to them and these guys they are herbivores so they're going to be eating all of the plant matter that they can find and these guys their favorite thing is things like cucumber they love a bit of baby gem lettuce um, but they quite enjoy a carrot now that's quite incredible because if you look at them they don't look like they'd be able to munch through a carrot but they can snails do actually have teeth just not teeth like we have. Okay, don't get worried. You're not going to get bitten by a snail. They're not going to come after you. Um, if they did, it would be really, really slow, wouldn't it? <laughs> but they're not going to do that. Their mouth is actually underneath and you can't. It's a hidden mouth. So you're not going to be able to see that unless you're looking under a microscope. But have a little look at him. Oh, he's amazing. Don't you agree? we got to love a snail. <laughs> So for our last animal, we are going to meet an arachnid. Now arachnids are very different to our insects or our snails that we met. Okay, because arachnids, they have got two parts of their body. They have got eight legs. Okay, and we are going to meet our friend Matilda. Now Matilda is especially for Laura. Now, Laura did message and she asked for a spider. Um, so we have done that for her today. Now, remember, if there are any animals that you would particularly like to meet, you can message me. You can leave a little comment on our videos and I will do my best for you. So this is Matilda. She is a Chilean rose tarantula. Now, these guys get their name because they are often found around Chile in South America. And the rose part comes because of, can you see, just on her head, she has got these metallic pink hairs. Now, unfortunately, I can't use my hands to kind of focus her in a little bit more. But she's got these pink hairs on her that people thought looked like a rosebud. So that is why they've got the name the Chilean Rose Tarantula. Now, I want to put some people's mind at rest. Nobody has ever died 
from a tarantula bite. Okay, these are not man eaters. You really don't need to be as fearful as everybody seems to be about tarantulas. Okay, now these guys are insectivores, meaning that they eat insects, they eat bugs. And what I think is pretty cool is these guys use their venom to be able to um, stop their prey. So it paralyzes their prey and then it liquidizes the inside of them. So then they basically bite into, say, their fly, their cricket, their grasshopper, and their venom then liquidizes the inside and they slurp out the inside just like an insect smoothie. It's delicious. Everybody's going to rush and have their insect smoothies now, aren't they? Maybe. <laughs> um, now, can you see, if I put her, now she's in my one hand, I can focus in a little bit more. So can you see this bit just at the front? That's her mandible, so her mouth part. So that's what she'll help to um, draw her food into her mouth. And then if I hold her up really, really carefully, let's have a little count of her legs. So how many can you count? Because she should have eight, shouldn't she? But actually, she looks like she's got ten. But these bits at the front, these here, those are called pedipalps. And pedipalps are not legs at all. They are basically little feelers, a little bit similar to our um, snail. But those help her push her food into her mouth. Now, I'm really sorry if you're not fans of spiders, okay? But I think you have to agree, she is very beautiful. She is incredible. Look at her go. Pretty impressive. I hope you enjoyed her and I haven't scared too many people or made people scream because I think she is amazing. Oh, and you can just see that little black blob right in the middle. Those are her eyes, just there. <laughs> so to recap on our mini beasts, Mini beasts are invertebrates, so animals with no backbone. And the ones that we've met today, they are known as arthropods. Now, most arthropods, they have what is called an exoskeleton on the outside of their body. That is there to protect them. Now, the snail that we met, they are known as mollusks. They don't actually have an exoskeleton. They have their shell instead as their protection. Now, did you know that in Britain, we have got 25,000 mini beasts living here? Different species of mini beasts. Okay, that is a huge amount. And in the world, over 97% of the animal population is made up of invertebrates. That is incredible. Now, we have to do everything that we can for our invertebrates, so our creepy crawlies, because did you know that without creepy crawlies, we would have no cute and fluffy animals? Without creepy crawlies, we wouldn't exist. Okay, so it's our job to make sure that we do all that we can to protect our invertebrate species. So that can be something as simple as planting some wild flowers in your garden. You could make a bug hotel. That's an amazing idea to do at the moment because we've got not a lot else to do. So make a bug hotel in your garden for them. Give them a safe space um, to have their babies and to, um, to live. But also think about the chemicals that you're using in your garden and out and about. Is there a natural alternative? that you could use to help protect our creepy crawly population. I really hope you enjoyed watching um, the video today. Um, as always, I'm going to give it a little plug. Um, we have got our animal care fund um, on our crowdfunder page. So please, if you are enjoying our videos, please could you donate just a couple of pounds, a few pennies, some pocket money, um, just to go towards that because we are really struggling at the moment. As I say, we're not able to go out and meet people and that's our sole source of income. So if you are able to donate, just a little bit that would really really help our animals also we've got an amazon wish list so if you prefer not to give money but to actually buy our animals a present that would be amazing as well and all the details can be found in the post above thanks so much and i shall see you next week